Hey, thanks so much for joining us here on 90s Plus. And as you might have heard, NASA releasing the first images from the James Wave Webb Telescope on Monday and Tuesday. And folks, the images are absolutely stunning. The five images released by NASA show gas planets over a thousand light years away from Earth, galaxies, many of them interacting with one another, faraway stars in incredible detail, and lots more. And for a bit more on these just, again, stunning images, what they mean and what we can expect from this amazing web telescope moving forward, we're now joined by Dr. Kachun Yu, a curator of space science from the Denver Museum of Nature, Nature and Science. And uh, Dr. Yu, it is a pleasure to have you on again to talk about these just absolutely extraordinary images. Yeah, happy to be here. I think, uh, you yeah, know, I speak for all astronomers as well as anyone who's interested in space in just saying that um, the image release has you know, exceeded everyone's expectations. As you say, they're um, really stunning and they're just a beautiful example of what we're going to expect from the James Webb Space Telescope in coming years. Before we get into anything else, uh, one of those images, correct me if I'm wrong, is, is uh, behind you, is that correct? Yes, um, so behind me, I have the, uh, the release um, image um, showing the Carina Nebula. And that's a region um, where there um, are lots of gas clouds, um, but also um, massive um, stars um, that um, drive um, ultraviolet radiation and stellar winds. And so um, they're calling these the cosmic cliffs. And so you can sort of see um, behind me um, what looks like, um, you know, earthbound um, geological formations, but uh, they're actually gas clouds that have been excavated by the UV radiation and by the winds um, from massive stars. And so this is a region that's um, in turmoil uh, because um, you know, the gas clouds are being uh, blasted away, but at forming young stars. So um, this, is a place, this is a place where uh, future stars and future solar systems will be born. Absolutely stunning. Again, I know one takeaway that will inevitably happen when we're done here is we are going to feel very, very small about all of ourselves um, once all this is, uh, once we finish our chat here. But uh, for starters, Doctor, do you mind giving us a broad idea about the images that were released and what we are seeing for the first time, things that we hadn't seen before this amazing telescope came out? Yeah, so we can uh, talk about the image that was released um, at the White House event. Um, so this is like a precursor. But this was a, um, the um, James Webb Space Telescope staring at a uh, patch of sky. And uh, the way that they described it was uh, the patch of sky is sort of like a grain of sand that you hold at arm's length. Um, and so you can imagine that's a very um, tiny patch of sky. And I think um, the telescope um, looked at this for um, just under a day, so on the order of 12 hours. And, uh, and um, just even um, with a day of, um, or less than a day of observations, it was able to see um, back to about 13.1 billion years in the past. And so you're, you're seeing galaxies um, extending out in distance. And because the speed of light is finite, what that means is that the further you look, the further back in time you're seeing. And so we're seeing galaxies um, from you know, relatively close by all the way to ones that were formed just hundreds of millions of years after the Big Bang. I wonder if light has um, jet lag, but um, the 13.5 billion years, again, just stunning. Um, any one image that particularly stood out to you, um, a favorite, something that you really learned from uh, one in particular? Yeah, I, I think uh, the, the one with the galaxies um, is just really um, mind blowing uh, because if you think about it, you know, every single one of these galaxies contains tens to hundreds of billions of stars, um, just like our own Milky Way. And it's probable that uh, many of these stars um, host planets around them. So not only are we seeing probably tens of thousands of galaxies, but you know, many um, thousands of billions of, of stars and uncountable planets. And you know, who knows um, what, what might be on those planets. Um, and then uh, that, that um, image, you know, like I said, um, you're also looking uh, backwards in time. So you're actually seeing the evolution of our universe and the evolution of galaxies just in one picture. So it's pretty amazing. This may also link in here, so feel free to elaborate on this a little bit, but, but since these are new images, we're seeing so much new. Um, can you tell me something that you've learned from seeing the, these and what do you think 
again, granted these images just came out, what do you think the scientific community has also learned from this new vantage point, these images? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it, it's still um, very early. You know, these images were, um, were selected um, to be um, imaged and, and released um, just six weeks after, um, you know, they certified that all the instruments on the telescope uh, were functioning uh, properly. So I, I suspect even the scientists themselves haven't really had, had a chance, and the ones who decided on, on to, um, which images to take, um, they haven't had a chance to really go in and um, really um, start to analyze um, what, um, what we're seeing. But, you know, like um, what we've seen in, in the past, anytime that you have a new telescope, that you have a new instrument, a new camera, um, not only um, are people um, always kind of blown away by, um, you know, new details that they might see, um, have never seen before in, um, in places that they have looked before, but um, there's always new surprises. So we really can't even predict what sort of new surprising discoveries and new information will be revealed once astronomers really start to dig into these data and these images. How does what we're seeing now, and you touched on this at the beginning a little bit, but how does what we're seeing now compare to what we saw with the Hubble telescope and other predecessors? Yeah, so uh, the James Webb Space Telescope is the largest telescope that we've ever launched into space. So, uh, you know, um, the, the mirror um, on James Webb is about 21 feet across, uh, whereas the mirror on Hubble is only about six feet across. So uh, the bigger the mirror, the more light you can gather and the fainter uh, the object you can see. So um, that's why um, even with under a day's worth of observations, James Webb was able to um, give us these um, stunning look at these galaxies. The other difference between James Webb and Hubble is that it looks in the infrared. So this is a part of the spectrum that our, our eyes aren't sensitive to. The Hubble um, Space Telescope did have some sensitivity, but not as, um, as large of a range. And so um, with um, the infrared, you can actually look um, at um, galaxies very early on in the universe because um, as the universe has expanded, that light is actually um, stretched out as well and it has stretched out into the infrared. And like the image behind me, um, a lot of, um, I'm not um, actually sure um, what um, this exact region looks like um, with Hubble. Um, Hubble has imaged this field, but um, because this is in the infrared, we're actually able to see through a lot of the intervening murk and um, the, the dust clouds and the gas clouds that kind of hide a, um, a lot of the stars um, that are in this field behind me. So uh, James Webb um, does um, allow us to see things that um, we weren't um, able to see before at all. So it's pretty amazing. It certainly is. Um, now in terms of, you mentioned how small of a speck of sky that we're looking at with all this. Is the plan to survey most of the sky or how much of the sky and what are the, I guess, capabilities? How, how much of the sky are we able to look at with this telescope? Yeah, so this telescope um, isn't actually designed to survey like large swaths of the sky. And there, there are other um, telescopes um, both on the ground um, and on um, the drawing board for a future space mission, which will be mapping uh, large parts of the sky. Um, as it turns out, uh, the way um, telescope observing works is that for a telescope like this, um, there, there is some dedicated time um, set aside for um, sort of the fundamental um, missions uh, yeah, that the James Webb Space Telescope was designed for, such as um, looking for the first stars and the earliest galaxies. Um, but there's also something called the Guest Observer Program. And this is um, something where any astronomer or really anyone um, can apply for time and you just have to write a proposal um, describing what you want to do. And then it goes through this gauntlet of peer review where other astronomers anonymously um, review your proposal against you know, thousands of other proposals and only the uh, best of the best get through and get selected for observing time. And then the, uh, this um, early batch of images was an early uh, release um, set of images. So these were um, targets that were especially selected that could be um, observed early on, um, in, you know, given where James Webb's um, is in its orbit, and which people uh, thought would um, give um, really stunning, you know, visually amazing results, but also, um, I'm sure, um, you know, the amount of science that they could get out of it um, was also part of um, the selection criteria. But, uh, you know, going on forward, 
Um, I think uh, a lot of the um, the future results we'll be hearing about will be coming from these guest observers. And oftentimes, you know, they might observe a small patch of the sky or they might observe just one um, nebula or one region. Um, although, uh, you know, sometimes some observers uh, might uh, be applying for um, more time to look at uh, bigger patches. Uh, I, would, I, I wouldn't know what to put on that application other than everything. And Maybe finding where the life is. I, I don't know, but um, <laughs> that's yeah. That's imagine you know, like your yeah, you know, um, like, like a really hardcore um, college application where you have to justify every single thing that you know, you're planning to do. That is fascinating that it's open to the public like that to me, which is um, uh, in, in a good way. I think that's stunning. But um, I, I guess with this in mind, do, do you mind putting into context? And you mentioned at the beginning that this perhaps has exceeded expectations. But how big of an achievement is this for NASA and for the space community as a whole? Well, I think um, you know, for astronomers who have followed this, um, the it took uh, many decades for the telescope to um, you know to be developed um, and to finally um, to be launched in um, on Christmas Day of last year. So Christmas 2021 was when the Ariane 5 rocket uh, took off. Um, from French Guiana to, um, to take it into the telescope to space. And then um, for the next um, many weeks and, and several months, it actually took a long time for the telescope to basically just unfold because it was packed up inside its rocket and um, it um, went through this very complicated process. It was almost like a transformer like folded out to be um, its um, you know, normal op operating size. It's basically um, larger than a tennis court and it's about two stories high. And so anything, um, I mean, there's just hundreds of steps that were involved. And so you can imagine people were in pins and needles because you know, any um, one or a couple of those steps um, didn't happen properly you might not have a te working telescope anymore. So um, it was, you know, people not only um, were waiting for so many years um, to see this telescope go up, but even launching it and having it um, get to its uh, final uh, position was um, sort of an ordeal as well, because, you know, you were just waiting for, um, for all these things to, to go correctly. So for these final images or these first set of images to come down, and to see that you know everything um, with the telescope is basically working uh, per almost perfectly, that is such a huge relief. And I think for the astronomers you know, who plan these observations, it's um, it's probably um, you know very mind blowing even for them because you know they um, were the first ones to see these images, and they're also realizing um, no human has ever seen you know, these galaxies or these stars um, in such a way before. And they were the first ones um, to see them. And then now, you know, we're all able to see them as well. But um, that must have been just an, an emotional moment for them. Absolutely, I can only imagine. Um, any final takeaways, anything about the images that we haven't touched on or big takeaways about the telescope as a whole? Yeah, I, um, I think, um, you know, one final takeaway is um, there's um, one uh, picture that was released that wasn't a, um, what you would think, it, of uh, as a picture is just a, a plot or a graph or um, it's actually a spectrum which is like a fingerprint a chemical uh, fingerprint uh, via light and it was taken of a, um, a large puffy planet around um, a, a distant star and what they were able to do with the James Webb Space Telescope was to actually determine that there's um, water vapor in the atmosphere of this planet and uh, I mean, and this follows on work that um, the Hubble Space Telescope did, the Spitzer Space Telescope. But what it shows you is just the amazing capacity for James Webb to find um, signatures of chemical elements um, and molecules um, that um, are important um, for life here on Earth. And so um, James Webb um, might not um, actually discover life elsewhere in the universe, but it's definitely one really important tool that will um, allow us in the future to find life elsewhere in the universe if it exists. Wow, that's stunning. Did not know that. So uh, that, again, I, I feel like I could carry on with this all day and, and pepper you with questions. But Dr. Kachunyu, I'll leave this there. Dr. Kachunyu, uh, Curator of Space Science from the Denver Museum of Nature and Science, thank you so much for enlightening us about these amazing images, what they mean, putting it into context, and the very exciting yet decidedly creepy note there at the end that this has 
may, perhaps an extraordinary um, ability to detect life or some of the chemicals that might be needed for life outside of our uh, galaxy. Uh, thanks so much. Yeah, thank you for having me, Chris. Right.